In this section, we're going to continue to talk about rendering, and we're going to start talking about lights. Now, if I do a render of my sphere here, the light that you're seeing is the default Rhino light. It's basically an over-the-shoulder light, parallel rays, sort of like having a lamp over your shoulder shining at your object. My lights tool palette is here. And this is where I can add my lights. I can create a spotlight, a point light, directional light, rectangular, linear, and I can edit the light properties. So let's take a look. We're going to create a spotlight. Now a spotlight is going to be sort of like a cone. I can start in my top viewport here, draw this as large as I like. And you can see now in my rendered preview window, I'm getting an idea as to what this is going to look like. Move it a little closer, it gets a little brighter. If I go to my properties window, I can change the color of my light. For example, yellow. Shadow intensity, this can be changed, and spotlight hardness. That affects the brightness, kind of the feathering or smoothness of the spotlight. Let's do a render. And it's similar to our rendered preview, except in the preview mode, as you can see, the light remains white. Now, spotlights can be moved, rotated, or scaled like any other object. I can use my scale tool. And then I can rotate here, and as you can see, the back of the object is not lit. The shaded preview, of course, remains ambient 360-degree light. So now, we're going to delete this light and create point light. And there you can see our point light. I can right-click to create other point lights. And you can see these small lights in the rendered preview. I just keep right-clicking to repeat my last tool, which was point light. So it makes for kind of an interesting lit figure. And there's our render. I'm going to select all of these, hold Control and deselect my sphere, and delete my point lights. Now, as you'll notice in the perspective window, when I delete the lights, the shape actually gets brighter. The reason is that's because it's defaulting back to Rhino's 360-degree light. Directional light end of light direction vector. I'll click here, start of light direction vector, here. So there's our directional light. We can mirror this light if we want. As you can see, this is a very powerful light that points and spreads from a certain direction. And again, we'll do a quick render. My spotlight hardness, because this is not a spotlight, is not selectable. We can change our color, though. We'll try a light blue, just again to get an idea of what the different colors look like. As you can see, I've changed just the color of one of those lights. I can select all of my lights. change my color to lavender, re-render, and now you can see the colors taking effect. I'm going to go back into my rendered properties window here. Right click here. Let's change our background color to black. Sometimes black will make your subject stand out a little better, and let's take a look. And there we can see that looks a little better. Now I'm going to delete my lights.
We'll try a rectangular light. And as you can see, it's kind of a flattened light that spreads in the direction this line is pointing from our rectangle. That dot that you can see here is the center. And of course, like any other light, we can use our transform tools copy, scale, rotate, transform, etc. I'm going to undo those. The last light is a linear light. Light origin, we'll choose here. Light length and direction. As you can see, the farther away I get, the larger the column grows. And we'll choose here. And so once again, there's a preview. So as you can see, Rhino has five different light types and different ways to manipulate them according to material properties or light properties.